What's happening, baseball fans? How is everybody tonight? I am so glad to see all of you guys here. Welcome to This Week in Perfect Team, hosted this week and just this week by me. This is Chris's show. Uh, huge shout out to Snaggle J. Chris starting. Chris is not here this evening. Uh, best wishes to Chris. We love you. Uh, everything is fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, but uh, Chris will be back next week. Uh, but in the meantime, guess what? I'm here to do a great show. I can never, you know, step into the shoes of, uh, of Chris Jardine, but I'm going to do my best tonight, folks. I'm going to do my best to make you guys delighted. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here to do. And to do that, we're going to, you're, you're going to need to work with me tonight. We're going to have to have some fun. That's the rule. We're going to have to have some fun. Um, that's just, that's how it's going to be. So what we're going to do is a couple of things, obviously. For this week in Perfect Team, we're going to go over all of the new cards. There are 24 brand new cards for us to uh, for us to take a look at tonight, and they were all available in packs right now. I pressed the buttons; they're in packs. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a look at all of that. Uh, Twitch drops are rolling. So you will get your uh, you'll get your Twitch drops all uh, all good, and uh, after this week in Perfect Team, we'll take a short break, and then we'll do the uh, Thursday Perfect Team playoff prep. Uh, one, we'll take a look at my squad. We will do call your shot, and we'll do giveaways, and we'll do all of that kind of fun stuff. So a a separate kind of a fun. And after that, if I can figure out how to do it, last week we raided. This week, we're going to host the This Week in This Week in Perfect Team show run by our good friend DRC Nomads and accompanied by Kidneys. And we're going to uh, we're going to host that. So theoretically, folks, it's a triple header tonight. Theoretically. One thing we know for sure is I'm here right now. So we got that going for us, right? <laughs> so I know you guys don't like me to mess around. You want to get right to the content. I get it. But real quick, a couple of things. Important information. Number one, the historical packs and the diamond packs are available right now for like Less than 12 hours. They are going away uh, as of tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. Right? Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Eastern. Historical packs, diamond packs going bye-bye. Not forever, but for at least a little while. So um, that is an important piece of information I wanted you guys to know. And something else that's important that I wanted you guys to know is that the latest episode of our podcast, Out of the Park Now, hit today, and we have our good friend Travis Sawchick from 538 will be uh, joining, or did join us, and he is awesome. He is the author of one of my favorite books of the last few years, The, the MVP Machine, and we talk about the wild and crazy 2020 year, the regular season, the playoffs, the future, the minor leagues, all of that kind of stuff. So he's on the podcast this week, and... And big data too. You're right. Wait till next year. And um, uh, last week, in case you missed it, our good friend Chris Jardine joined me, and Chris goes all over the process, um, the conception, the execution, uh, the good, the bad, the awesome, and everything else related to the face of the franchise. So uh, if you have never listened to the Out of the Park Now podcast, it is, uh, it's our flagship podcast, and uh, it's, it's, it's fun. And so check it out. It's a good time. I don't know what it commutes anywhere anymore. Like, I used to listen to a lot more podcasts when I commuted. Um, but, uh, you know, I still listen to my, my favorite shows. Um, not as many as I used to, but I still listen to my favorite shows. So I hope you guys have a good time and uh, check out out of the park now 
the podcast. It's on all of your podcast catching applications. It's on Google Play and Apple Podcasts and it's on Spotify and it's got a website and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think, by the way, guys, I think if we host the, the DRC Nomads this weekend, this weekend Perfect Team, um, I believe that you'll get the drops during that. Can't promise you anything. I can't promise anything technology-wise, right? I just can't. Technology does what it wants to do, but that is the plan. That's why we kind of wanted to host. Um, and uh, drops are working. They're running. I can see the dashboard. Everything's Everything's working, so... Uh, that's happening. And you're right. If I'm wrong, see Whitman. If I am wrong, then I'm wrong. And I apologize. I don't know. Um, Eddie Van Halen, uh, my hero. Uh, when I was a, when I was a kid um, and I first heard Van Halen, I didn't know what I was listening to. I, it was unbelievable. It was like nothing I'd ever heard. And uh, I've been a huge Van Halen fan and even more an Eddie Van Halen fan my whole life and that was uh that was my very small very small way of um of paying tribute to the greatest guitar player in rock and roll history right, and to me it's not even a contest eddie van halen is the greatest rock and roll guitar player in history i you know i know music is subjective i get that right you know if you want to say it's i don't know eric clapton or you want to say it's Jimi hendrix or you want to say it's I don't know, Ingve Malmsteen or whatever, that's fine, right? But as far as impact, impact, Eddie Van Halen had, I think, the greatest impact on rock and roll. And so that was my little tribute. That was my little tribute to, to the great, to the great Eddie Van Halen. Okay. Love you, Eddie. Rest in peace. God bless. Let's get to it, guys. Oh, Steve Ray Vaughan. I love Steve Ray. I saw a Steve Ray Vaughan concert. One of the greatest concerts I've ever seen. I saw Van Halen in concert multiple times. It was great. I know it's I know it's subjective. Like I get it. You know what I mean? There's it's hard to quantify factually. But Eddie Van Halen, rock and roll, he changed it. He changed it. Okay. All right. Let's get to it, gang. Let's see if I can do this properly. I am a uh, you know, this is uh, can we get a professional in here? Is that possible to get it? No? Nope. There's there there's not? Okay. So I'm not a professional of this. But we're gonna do our best. We're gonna do our best. Today is the 93rd, 93rd episode of this week in Perfect Team. Uh Gnocchi is currently um resting comfortably on uh my son's beanbag chair it's pretty hard to get her out of that beanbag chair but we got a long night ahead of us guys so you never know you never know what could happen okay so you guys want the fire content right so here's what we're doing we're doing 24 cards uh and we're splitting it up with uh with some fall phenoms that we are going to take a look at first and then after the fall phenoms we're going to see our historical players of the month and after we see our historical players of the month we're going to see our live players of the month and this is really fun there's some really great stuff in here i'm excited i'm excited for all of you guys uh, and i'm terrified that you guys are going to say i did a terrible job tonight so i'm going to do my best gang i'm going to do my best all right let's see if i can press the correct button first shall we let's get going with our fall phenoms what do you say fall phenoms and it's a goatee it's not a beard and it's only mostly gray impacts now all right up first a historical legend a diamond 92 left-handed peak reb russell Reb Russell. Look that one up, gang. That is going back a ways. That is going back a ways. Look at this guy. He can do a lot of stuff. He can pitch and he can hit. 
A true two-way player. That's exactly right. We're starting right with the diamonds, gang. I don't mess around. Now, nobody messes around. Chris doesn't mess around either. But, yeah, we're going right to the diamonds. I can't claim the, the curation or creation of this content. I could, Well, I can, but I would be lying. <laughs> so, uh, that is... Uh, by the way, he is the White Sox. I saw the... Uh, I saw the question, what team is he on? He is on the White Sox. 1913 White Sox. In fact, in uh, the late stages of that 1913 season, Mr. Reb Russell uh, went 3-1 and one with a 0.89 ERA and three shutouts. Not bad. Not bad. Yes, it's missing the logo, which is why I had to go look up what team he was on. So uh, that is uh, that is the first of the 12 fall phenoms here tonight. He did not throw the World Series that I know of. That I know of. <laughs> so uh, that is the first of the fall phenoms. Reb Russell. All right. Up. Yeah, no, that was 1919. I know. Did he play for them in 1919? It's possible. It's possible. He only played one game in 1919. Hmm, I wonder why. It's a very good card. Reb Russell, left-handed starter. Peak. Peak. All right. Up next. This is fun. I like this. Up next, another historical diamond. Dan Heron. Dan Heron, a.k.a. this card is for Alex Murray. Dan Heron, a 92-rated diamond starter. Peak. Look at those pitches. He's got a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six pitches. Excellent stamina. Really good. Uh, particularly against righties. That is a that is a solid card. That is a solid card. Uh, that is the peak heron, I believe. That was two thousand and nine ish, but I don't know for sure. But I think that was two thousand and nine ish is what uh, is what I'm what I'm looking at. Yes, they are impacts now. Dan Heron and all these guys are impacts now. Yeah, about 2009, Alex. You got some comments on that? <laughs> but this one has uh, AZ Axel's name all over it. All over it. Didn't, uh, do I have that wrong? Or did they uh, lose to the, uh, do they beat the Rockies and then lose to the Dodgers? And, and do I have that right? I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not exactly up to speed on my historical Diamondbacks information. So. All right, let's keep this content train rolling, shall we? It is the next one in the Fall Phenoms. Yeah, Chick Hafey, a historical legend, a 94, a 94 Chick Hafey. Chick Hafey near the, uh, in the, in the fall of 1931. Crazy train is definitely applicable. In the fall of 1931, Chick Hafey hit 435, 495, 706 slash. Yeah, that's right. Seven doubles, two triples, four homers, 24 RBIs. 1931. Chick Hafey. 1931. A very interesting card. Uh, Hafey, uh, if I have this right, let me get back to my stuff here. Where did it go? Where is Chick? Where is Chick Hafey? I had him here and I just lost him. Hold on a second. Chick Hafey. There he goes. He uh, finished fifth in the MVP race in 1931 for the St. Louis National League Cardinals. So that uh, is uh, in 1931, as I mentioned, in the uh, in, in the run. He actually led the league in hitting that year as well. Hit 349. So Chick Hafey. 
Excellent card. Very interesting. All sorts of good stuff happening there. You guys know more about uh, you guys know more about this uh, chick happy than than I do, clearly. <laughs> but as you can say, chick can hit, especially from the right side. Solid power, excellent contact. Uh, he can uh, he can do some damage on the bases as well. He can uh, he can play a few positions in the outfield. Chick Hafey, left fielder, 94. Halfy? Is it half? Halfy? I don't know. I don't know. Yes, there is a theme of why these were uh, picked as fall phenoms. And, and uh, when uh, Chris hops back on, he can, he can go through. I don't want to steal any thunder from our man, from our man Chris. But, oh, yeah, baseball reference comes in super handy. <laughs> Super handy. All right. Continuing the crazy content train. Bob Welch. Peak Bob Welch. A 94 historical diamond. Look at those pitches. The guy can pitch. He can absolutely pitch. That would be a good outro. If I have time for an outro, an acoustic crazy train. That could work. I know that, Lick. Bob Welch. Bob Welch. I think it was 1983 was his peak. I think, but could be wrong. In 1983, in the fall of 1983, he went 3-1 three and one with a 2-3-3 ERA and a 0 0.905 whip. And for the 83 Dodgers, you may remember, they won the National League West, but then they lost to the Philadelphia Phillies in the uh, NLCS, and those Phillies went on to lose the 83 World Series to, I believe, the Baltimore Orioles. So, uh, so that is the peak Bob Welch. Excellent card. Historical Diamond 94. Uh-oh. Drop my pen. I need my pen so that my cat can knock it on the floor again. It's a whole thing we got going on. She loves to knock my pens on the floor. I don't understand it. But hey, she's a cat. That's what she does. Right? All right. How am I doing so far, guys? Am I doing all right for you? I hope I'm doing all right for you. If not, you'll tell me, right? I'm trying to bust open a Diet Cherry Coke. There we go. So far, so good? All right. That is high praise coming from my favorite person, Dishnet. All right. Up next, Al Spalding, another historical diamond, 94, Al Spalding. Yeah, that's what I said, too. I just had to say, Al Spalding? Who the heck is Al Spalding? The dude played between 1871 and 1877. Are you kidding me? A peak right-handed starter. The dude won. <laughs> the dude won 54 games in 1875. People, 54 games. 54 games. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, this is definitely an interesting situation. Clearly a good pitcher. He can also play a little first base. Can hit a little bit. Four pitches, really good stuff against righties in particular. <laughs> Split tastic is right. Yeah, I don't. I you know I am I am criminally uh, undereducated about the great Al Spalding, but I am going to get more educated about him. <laughs> so yeah, that is uh, that is a a a another brand new impacts right now. Historical legend as part of our fall phenoms, a 94. All right, gang. Ready for the next one? First of all, let me just triple check that our uh, our drops are working. And they are. That's good. They're slow. I guess just you should know that they're always slow. Just period. They're always slow. They're just slow. And eventually they catch up. All right. <laughs> 
Up next in the Fall Phenoms is Ellis Burks. This guy. This guy was legit. I remember Ellis Burks, man. A 95 historical legend. This dude. This is the dude. He was fantastic. So a historical legend, Ellis Burks. You know, the dude finished 15th in the MVP race. Granted, that was in 2000. Uh, but he was unbelievable for the Red Sox, particularly in 1990, um, where overall for the season at 296, 21 homers, 89 RBIs, uh, he, uh, he actually wound up with 128 RBIs, if you guys remember, in 1996. But that's not this guy. That is not this one. This is him at his peak with the Red Sox, a historical diamond at 95. And you can see, again, fantastic power, excellent contact, particularly. Uh, well, really, it's on both sides of the plate, right? Um, excellent on the bases. Excellent outfield. He can do a lot. This card can definitely do a lot for you. So this is a, a 95 historical Ellis Burks listed as a center fielder, but as you can see, can easily play left and right. And yeah, I remember, man, I just remember being, you know, just scared watching Ellis Burks because he was so good for, for a period of time, man. He was really, really good. You will get drops without sound. I don't know how that works. I, I, I honestly, I'm not a, I'm not a drops expert. In fact, the more I work with drops, the less of an expert I am. I just, I, I press the buttons and I cross my fingers. <laughs> that's, that's my relationship with Twitch drops. So, all right. You do need to get the sound on to get the drops. Okay. Well, there you go. I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. I wish I knew. I would like to know. I would like to, you know, be be able to tell you, but I'm not exactly sure. All right. Up next, another 95 historical diamond, AJ Burnett. Wow. AJ Burnett crushing it. A look at those pitches. Look at all of those pitches. He's got an excellent fastball, slider, cutter, and changeup. Dominate. Just dominant. Fantastic card. Nosy Kyle is unhappy with the control. Noted. <laughs> Killed the Yankees in 03. I believe that. Nine walk, no hitter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, didn't Joe Cali have like some sort of a crazy no hitter too, right? Like where he 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 walked like half half of the batters he faced or something, but he still got a no hitter. <laughs> Joe Cali, I think it was for the White Sox, and I don't remember uh, who it was against. But AJ Burnett will do just fine in a lot of those rotations. Absolutely fine in a lot of, in a lot of those. Again, you can see good. Uh, Four good pitches. Well, four really good pitches. Four blue pitches. That's pretty good. Pretty good. So I don't know what number we're up to, but we got a couple more here. A couple more here in the Fall Phenoms. Up next. Up next is Skip Lockwood, your Mets legend a right-handed closer his peak a 96 historical diamond look at that curveball look at that curveball look at that stuff against righties i claim no responsibility for this card yes i'm wearing a reds hat but you guys most of you know i'm a uh, i'm a mets fan but look at that curveball <laughs> Skip Lockwood throwing Uncle Charlie's, nay, Lord Charles's, up 
and over and past everybody. And yes, that sacrifice bunt, that'll push some runners over. There's no doubt about that. And yeah, the stamina is interesting. A 27 stamina, that could be uh that could be uh you know, that could be your stopper comes in in the 8th, gets a couple of uh couple of innings of work. A lot of people have not heard of Skip Lockwood. You are not the first person uh, on this stream me, who, uh, who had not heard of Skip Lockwood. <laughs> you know, as a diehard Mets fan, I'm like, I should probably have a special place in my heart for Skip Lockwood, right? Like, you know, you're talking to a guy whose all-time favorite Met is Wally Backman. You know, and I love Tom Seaver, and I love Hubie Brooks, right? And I love, I love, um, I mean, I got Rick Aguilera, Danny Heap. You know, like, I, I go deep with the Mets. And uh, Skip Lockwood, I was like, huh? What? Four score, we will not stand for any Jed Lowry commentary tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't love Huey Brooks? Exactly right. Huey Brooks, like for uh, a month or so in the early 80s, had me thinking he was going to break Joe DiMaggio's hit streak. <laughs> I remember it was like a big deal. I had like a 21 or 22, maybe a 23 game hit streak. I remember that. But that's not Skip Lockwood. Skip Lockwood evidently throws the best curveball in the history of mankind. All right, I think we got one more, maybe two, in the Fall Phenoms. And remember, we got a whole second set of a dozen cards coming up as well. Up next, n another 96, this time a left-handed closer, Gary Lavelle. Look at that sacrifice bunt. Gary Lavelle has the standard closer stamina, I would say. So that is interesting. A lefty specialist, indeed. That is going to really do some, do a number on some lefties. Really, really, really good control. In particular. <laughs> Lavelli, thank you. Gary Lavelli, I apologize. I always say it. I mean, zero disrespect to anyone whose names I mispronounce. It's I'm I'm just not the best, I'm just not the best with names. I apologize ahead of time, and I also apologize ahead of time for my squeaky chair because it's squeaky. <laughs> Gary Lavelli. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. I will mangle any name, any name whatsoever. <laughs> All right, I think we're down to our last, I think. Lavalley. Okay. Thank you, Blue. I think we're down to our last of the fall phenoms, I think. Oh, no, we're not. Because this is only, only a 99 historical diamond Roger Peckinpah. Look at that defense. What? What? Are you kidding me? A peak, Roger Peckinpah. Fantastic power, fantastic defense. Can run the bases. Can't bunt for hit, but he can sacrifice bunt. <laughs> Roger Peckinpah. A 99 historical diamond. Peak. Will these be needed for future missions? I don't know, Mac Jacks. That's a good question, and I don't know the answer. Uh, we will find out, of course, because that's what we do. By the way, I hope you're okay with me saying this, Mac Jacks. Mac Jacks is the first. Well, let me let me back up. Mac Jacks 
accomplished something that's incredibly difficult. He won the perfect league. Number two, he won it two weeks in a row. Two seasons in a row. And then, after a few weeks of letting some other people win the perfect league, the dude won it a third time. Three times. Nobody else has won it more than once. He's won it three times. Are you kidding me? That's impossible. And he did it three times. Unbelievable. Congratulations, Matt Jacks. That is a huge, huge accomplishment. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think now this is the final card. I think of this um, of this batch. No, it's not. <laughs> Guys, just remember, don't pay attention to me. The next one in the Fall Phenoms is another ninety-nine. Earl Avril, and I guarantee you, I'm pronouncing his name in incorrectly as well. Earl Avril. Center fielder, peak. Center fielder, peak. Excellent power, excellent contact, really good gap power. Dude can play. The dude can play. Max Fire, you deserve a trophy. I won't say for what. No, I'm just kidding. Max Fire, you definitely deserve a trophy. <laughs> Earl Averill, 99 historical legend, center fielder. He will do some damage. No doubt. Can't bunt for hit. He can run the bases. He can play a center field. And he can hit the long ball. He hits dingers. He hits dingers. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's correctly pronounced. Thank you. All right, that's one in a row. <laughs> one in a row. All right, up next. It could be the final card of the, because uh, I've lost count, of the first batch. Could be. Is it? It is. We close out the Fall Phenom with a perfect... Left-handed Hal Newhauser. Hal Newhauser, a historical perfect with, well, you can see for yourself. Look at that. Yes, that says 159 stuff versus lefties. <laughs> Only 141 versus righties. <laughs> he'll play. There is no doubt that he will play. That plays. I'm uh, definitely interested to hear what the This Weekend this weekend Perfect Team guys have to say about this one. <laughs> I mean, I'm interested to hear what they say about all of them, but this was definitely an interesting one. Yeah, Newhauser was definitely playing during the... Uh, during the World War II era. I would like to pull this on the next stream. I would very much like that. Very much like that. So, ladies and gentlemen, and we know from, from the last time, there's usually at least one or two ladies in the house. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Uh, here is your summary. You got a 92 Dan Heron, a 96 Earl Averill, a 95 Ellis Burks, a 95 A.J. Burnett, a 94 Chick Hafey, a 94 Bob Welch, a 96 Skip, who? Lockwood. A perfect Hal Newhouse. Hal Newhouser, excuse me. A 99 Roger Peckinpah, a 92 Reb Russell, a 94 Al Spaulding, and a 96 Gary Lavalley. A 96 Gary Lavelle. 
So that is your fall phenoms in packs right now. As we as we speak. Yeah, I know. Don't not only LFC, not only, you know, have you not heard of them, but I I haven't and I'm supposed to, supposedly a Mets fan. Supposedly a Mets fan, although, you know, it's harder and harder every day of my life to be a Mets fan. But that's okay. Kudos to Chris Jardine for putting this fantastic set together. I love it. Thank you for making me look good tonight, Chris. That's hard to do. It's very difficult to do. And yes, I am an Everton fan. And yes, we are top of the league. I'm very excited about that. All right. But that's not all. No, 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 no. I've got all sorts of notes and stats. We have 12 more brand new cards that are available in packs right now. 12 more. We're going to take a look at the players of the month, both historical and live. You guys ready for that? I think we're ready for that. I think we're ready. And drops are definitely working. That makes me happy. All right. Let's keep it going. Up next, ladies and gentlemen. Next, we've got the historical players of the month. Oh, Leo, you're not ready? All right, we'll start over. All right, thanks, everybody. Your name, Leo. Who is a genius who came up with Clark Shot? He's not ready. We're going to shut her down and chill out. No, I'm just kidding. We love you, Leo. You're awesome. And he is the inventor of Clark Shot. All right. Well, the, the drops are working. They are working. I can see rewards going out the door. It takes a while. As you guys know, these things are slow. All right, here we go. The we kick off the six historical players of the month. Let me get the right notes with Chris Coglin. Chris Coglin, two thousand and nine. Listen to what he did in two thousand nine, September. A slash line of three ninety four thirty five five fifteen. 13 doubles, 2 triples, 9 RBI. That was a good Marlins team, by the way. The 2009 Marlins are basically forgotten because they weren't one of the World Series champions. Those Marlins were, they won 87 games. Now, they weren't world beaters. But uh, they finished second in the National League East that year, won 87 ball games. And Chris Coughlin, I think it's Coughlin. Is it Coughlin? I think it's Coughlin. I don't know. I'm sorry. Had a 390, 435, 515 slash. Defense is definitely an issue. Coglin. Okay, good. Thank you. So, yes, he is a silver 78 historical player of the month, 2009, for the Marlins. And as you can see, he's got a particularly good contact, and he's good on the bases as well, and he can bunt a little bit, at least for a hit. All right. Up next. This is this is really interesting, and I'll tell you why in a second. Up next in our historical players of the month is 1962 Maury Wills, a gold 82. A bunch of reasons I like this card. Number one, uh, my friend Kevin Kennedy, the former Major League Manager, who we do the Kevin Kennedy Show with, which will be back on the air soon. Um, he loves Maury Wills. Maury Wills is one of the reasons he loves baseball. Maury Wills won the, won the MVP in 1962. He won the MVP. He won it over a guy named Willie Mays. Willie Mays had more homers, more everything, but Maury Wills stole so many bases, basically, that he won the MVP. I think, looking back, you could probably make a claim that three or four other guys should have won the MVP over Maury Wills, but who cares? Maury Wills was a great player, had an amazing year. Listen to his September of 1962. 
His slash line was 361, 420, 420. Yes, that's right. His on base and his slugging were exactly the same, 420. He stole 31 bases. 31 bases in September. 31 bases, 20 runs, 12 walks, only 11 strikeouts. And he won the MVP. So this is the September of his MVP season. <laughs> Fancy skunk, you jumped on that very quickly. <laughs> so yeah, he is uh, he is a really interesting card. A very interesting card. And uh, again, I have, a, a, you know, a, as somebody who has had Kevin Kennedy rave about Maury Wills, I was really excited to see this. This made me happy. And again, he won the MVP. All right, so that is the second historical player of the month. Up next in the historical players of the month, we've got Chris Medlin from 2012. A reliever with the Braves. Listen to his. Listen to his 2012. Uh, September 2012, excuse me. The dude went 4-0 with a 1.26 ERA, a .721 whip. 0.721 whip. 9.5K per 9. 43 innings pitched. 26 hits. Five walks. Five walks. 2012 Braves. 4 and up. 1.26. 0.721 ERA. Unbelievable September in 2012. I love Scott Music. Oh my gosh. Do I love Scott Music. Love it. All right. <laughs> So that is the third of the six players of the historical players of the month. We've still got the lives. All right. Up next. Oh, man. Guys, this card. J.D. Martinez, 2017 Diamondbacks. In 2017, again, this is another one that's got Alex written all over it. There he is. He popped up right away. The slash for J.D. Martinez, 396, 431, 950 in September of 2017. Yes. Yes. 396, 431, 950. Five zero. 16 home runs, 36 RBI, a 1.382 OPS. Even had eight doubles. My God, what a month. Helped the Diamondbacks win the wild card, which was a big game. Won the wild card game. That's where they beat the Rockies, 2017. They unfortunately lost the National League Division Series to the Dodgers. J.D. Martinez. Dude can hit. Dude can hit. <laughs> All right. Up next. This was... I had to read these stats uh, like seven times. George Collar. Caller, 1911. In September of 1911, George Collar for the Cleveland Indians went 7-0 with a 0 0.13 ERA. Yes, Kaler. A 0 0.13 ERA. In 71 and two-thirds innings pitch that month, he gave up one earned run. One. Unless baseball reference is lying to me, that is one of the most unbelievable stat lines I've ever seen. Because it's not like he killed it. 
not like he killed it for uh, for the whole year. It was just that month. He won seven games, lost none, had an ERA of 0.13. 71 and two-thirds innings pitched, 55 hits, one earned run. There was like 20 unearned runs. So there was a bunch of unearned runs. But I, I, I looked at that like five or six times just to make sure that I was right. And that is right. So one of the greatest possible pitching ERAs for an extended period of time. And the final of the historical players of the month for September. Brad Lidge, a 99-2004 Brad Lidge. His September slash October in 2004, 17 games, two wins, 11 saves, 19 and a third inning pitched, 37 strikeouts. That is a... 17.2K per nine. 17.2K per nine. Had a 1.4 ERA, a 0.828 whip. Also helped win the division series against the Braves. Uh, But they did lose in seven games to the St. Louis Cardinals in the NLCS. Seven games. Brad Lidge is the last of your historical players of the month for September. But wait, we still got six more live ones. There are guys right now. Got six more to go. All right, so moving from historical to live. Here we go. Up first. Jared Walsh, who also, by the way, is a pitcher. Jared Walsh, this September, hit 337, a 744 slugging, and a 1.113 OPS. Had a fantastic September. So, well done. Uh, well done by Jared Walsh this September. He is a silver 77. As you can see, the guy's got some pop, and uh, you know, all around, all around good player. I don't know what the pitching stats are like offhand, but uh, it is uh, he is definitely a two-way player. <clears throat> all right, up next in the live players, preacher boy, you're going to be happy. Up next, Corbin Burns, a 88, a gold 88, Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns had a fantastic, fantastic September. He went 3-1 with a 1.32 ERA, a 13.8K per nine, and a 0.951 whip. 27 and a third innings pitched, 42 strikeouts. That, my friends, is an impressive September slash October. As my good friend Magus says, that will play as a multi-inning stopper in the lower and mid-levels. Did I say Corbin Burnson? I didn't say Corbin Burnson. Did I? I hope I didn't. That would be, that would be embarrassing. Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns, a gold 88, ripped it up for the Brewers in September. Okay, good. Thank you, Bert. All right, up next, Boo Burns. <laughs> up next, Denelson Lamette, I believe, from the Padres, a diamond 91. Dude had a great September. Won a game, had a 1.76 ERA, a 0.750 whip, 30 and two-thirds innings pitched, 17 hits, 42 strikeouts, a solid 12.3 K per nine. So well done, Mr. Lamette. Three good pitches, as you can see. Particularly strong stuff. 
Control is definitely his issue. Um, but the dude can play. He can play. No doubt about that. All right, so Denelson, is it Lamette? Am I pronouncing that correctly? I don't know. I'm not sure. All right. Three more to go. No, it doesn't replace a live card. This is not a live card. This is a player of the month. This is a second card. Different, different card. All right, up next. Dun, 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 dun. Trevor Bauer. Trevor Bauer had himself quite a September slash October. Two and two. Helped the uh, Reds claw their way to the playoffs. A 1.29 ERA. A 0 0.800 whip. An 11.8 K per nine. 35 innings pitched. 22 hits. 46 strikeouts. I got to believe if the Reds had any offense whatsoever, he would have won more than a couple of games. Because, boy, he pitched lights out. Pitched lights out. So you can see the guy's got five pitches. Got electric stuff, good control, movement, could be a little shaky. And he will be a free agent. And as my friend Travis Sawchick says on this week's uh, Out of the Park Now, it'll be interesting to see if Mr. Bauer does what he said he's going to do in the past, which is, hey, I'm going to sign a one-year contract every single year, right? I'm going to be a free agent every single year. It'll be very interesting to see. If he does that. I'm a fan of Trevor Bauer. And I'm a fan of Trevor Bauer because I read the book The MVP Machine by Travis Salchik. And I just think he's an interesting dude. Uh, and I think he's a heck of a pitcher. And uh, I hope uh, I hope he does really well. And, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I agree with everything he says. It's just, you know, the guy is passionate and he does what he thinks is the right thing. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. The book is called The MVP Machine. It is by Travis Sawchick, and it's my favorite baseball book of the last couple of years. All right, two more to go. Oh, yeah, Ben Lindbergh was also, uh, it was a duel by Travis Sawchick and Ben Lindbergh. Thank you, Wiry Hooligan, I can speak. All right. Cabrian Hayes, I told you you'd be happy. Cabrian Hayes, a diamond 93. Listen to this dude's September slash October. Listen to this. 376, 442, 682 slash. Wow. A 1.124 OPS. Five homers, 11 RBIs, seven doubles, two triples. The dude can play. He can hit. He can run the bases. He can play third base. The guy can play. If I'm a Pirates fan, I'm really happy this guy is on my team. Really happy that this guy is on my team. I like this card. I was so impressed when I was uh, looking at what he had done this September. This is a fun card. You're exactly right, Dan O'Mac. Exactly right. Good card, and I'm, a, I'm excited to see what Cabrian Hayes does in the future. All right, the last card of the night is a 93, Jose Ramirez. Ramirez, again, just absolutely tearing it up. Absolutely tearing it up in September. A 366, 453, 841 slash with a 1.294 OPS. 10 homers, 24 RBI, 9 doubles, 11 walks, only 10 strikeouts. The dude can hit. The dude can hit. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your September Players of the Month. Maury Wills, George Kaler, Collar, I forget already. Brad Lidge, J.D. Martinez, Chris Coglin, Chris Medlin on the historic side. And then you got Jared Walsh, Brian Hayes, Jose Ramirez, Trevor Bauer. Uh, 
Denelson Lamet and the hidden uh, Corbin Burns. So that, my friends, is this week's This Week in Perfect Team. Now, don't fret. We're going to take a short break. And then I'm going to be back and we're going to do the Perfect Team Weekly Prep with giveaways and more drops and more making fun of me um, and all that good stuff. Drops are working. If you didn't get them, don't worry about it. They're working. I can see 598 have gone out the door already. So there will be more coming. Don't sweat about your drops. All right, gang. Hey, thank you so much for being so awesome tonight. This is my first time ever doing This Week in Perfect Team, and very likely will be my last because Chris will be here right back here next week with This Week in Perfect Team. Amazing work by Chris putting all this together. He did the whole thing. The whole thing. So thank you, Chris Jardine. God bless. We love you. Love you guys. We're going to take, again, a quick break. Don't don't go anywhere. And uh, we'll be back for some Perfect Team playoff prep. Take a look at my mainline team, my free-to-play team. Do some call your shot. Do some giveaways. All the good stuff. All right, gang. Thank you all. Have a fantastic uh, couple of minutes until we all see you back here again real soon. Cheers. <laughs>